Sarah Nevada, and she's a performer, an actress, a dancer, a choreographer, and a teacher. Thank you very much, Sarah, for accepting my invitation. Thank you as well. I'm really excited to be here and to share my story with you. And it's quite an interesting story as well, because you, you are a US citizen and uh, you've done your training in the US and also in Germany and you're living in Germany since you were 16, weren't you? Yes, yes. I came out here to become a ballerina and moved to Hamburg from California. And yeah, it was a big, it's been a very exciting adventure uh, for a long time. <laughs> Really exciting. It sounds exciting. And is Germany a good country to be in isolation? I would, I would have to say I don't really know generally what it's like to be in Germany, but to be in Berlin, it's, an, I think, probably, as I, as I understand, one of the most relaxed cities to be in at this time, as we are not forced to stay at home. We have... Um, certain laws that are um, prohibiting us to interact with more than one person, but uh, they have been very um, focused on keeping the people at peace and allowing them to, as I understand, I mean, I, I can't speak for everybody's experience, but um, I have a feeling Berlin has been more relaxed than other places, let's say like that. Mm -hmm. the, and so it hasn't hit me as something heavy, uh, as heavy, um, but maybe that is something related to my personal experience with this pandemic. Mm -hmm. This is what I was about to ask you. How did it affect you? How did the isolation affect you? Well, I think for a long time, uh, being a very versatile performer and um, artist in general with many, many ideas, and I, I would say that allowing myself in the last, um, over like I don't know last many years <laughs> say um, to 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 form an artistic persona that is based upon versatile artistic expressions. Then I I have been um, forced in this moment in time to really hone in my energy and also realize what I would like to share as a, um, a, a to share my voice. It's just, what what kind of voice would I actually like to really deliver to the world? Um, during this time and also in the future. So um, it has given me the opportunity, which maybe not for everyone um, is the same, to, to really spend a lot more time with myself and to decide what is it that I want to focus on um, for the next coming years, months, weeks, um, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, from my talks with other people, I guess uh, it was a time where most of the people that I've been talking to used it uh, just to look inside and they, they took their attention from the outside world and how they were perceived in the outside world and it gave them the chance to look inside. And I was thinking about this because you as a performer, you're used to being in front of people. You're yeah. used to living your emotions as a dancer and discovering yourself and uh, what you live in front of other people. How, how did that work out? Well, I think if you really look into the life of an artist, you know, your, your, your major desire is to, or performing artist, I'd say, is to express something that is going to create some kind of internal movement for someone else. And I have, not as much maybe like um, really dedicated so much effort in understanding what it is that people get from me. Um, so generally, I don't know if I would say that that has been um, something that I've been conscious of exactly. What, what is it that people are getting from me? I would say that um, being able to spend the time at home, and I, I, I'm a practicing Buddhist. I practiced eight years. I'm very disciplined about that. And at this particular moment, um, I, I put a lot of energy and effort into understanding more about my practice and um, being active with my community, my Buddhist community, and giving them as much um, encouragement as I can. And I think that by doing this, it has given me an opportunity to really 
be a little bit more free about what it is that I'm giving, but actually just from my heart, be able to express something that is um, not necessarily about my, um, the expectation of what I want to share, but more about the freedom or maybe the, the, the connection that I'd like to discover myself and all, with people. So I, I was lucky to do this, to, to have this video be very, um, I, I did a, a video in the streets dancing um, to Frank Sinatra. There was this opportunity that, it, that, aroused, that arose in my neighborhood, which is also a very important um, part of my life, my neighborhood, you know, making sure that I know my baker and, you know, walking around the streets still to kind of give them encouragement. And um, I was out doing um, acting shots with a friend of mine. She, she, she wanted to help me out because I, I need new headshots for my acting things, blah, blah. Um, and she happens to also be my neighbor. So we had like a, a, a walk outside and then this music came and then there was this opportunity for me to just feel, oh, I'm in my backyard. I'm here. You know, it's this normal, you know, that, that I don't need to put on a show, but I can actually just feel the freedom of, you know, dancing now. And I didn't expect anything so exciting to come out of it something like a viral video but i think because my intention was so pure and it was so um honed into what i'm concentrating on right now to actually really understand what it is that an artist is giving and doing and taking and receiving you know so um to to go back to your question i think that the the obvious difference of having to sort of really understand what it is my purpose is or what it is anybody's purpose is in this particular moment in time has become a very uh, strong core to my interest in this moment in time, I'd say. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it does. It does, actually. Um, I went to see Dalai Lama a few years ago while I was living in England and uh, I was lucky enough to be able to listen to him. And uh, now when people look inside themselves and discover more of, about who they are, um, I think this mindfulness that people keep talking about and uh, living in the moment, for example, living in the moment is something that artists and performers learn to do because if you're not present in that moment, everything just Go yes exactly and while you were i've seen the clip it's wonderful i mean i didn't know that it was something that happened there so i'm really happy that you told me about it and um i was just wondering because obviously it, did it feel different to you compared to the rehearsed things that you've done in your lifetime I I, to, to comment on that, I can say, you know, it has been actually my intention and my dream to always be able to go out and do stuff like that. So it, it does seem, on the other hand, kind of like, oh, well, all of a sudden I'm doing Sarah. Sarah Nevada is doing Sarah normal. You know, I come from a farm in California. I, it's normal for me to just start dancing and singing and acting. And a lot of people would say, oh, she's crazy. But I'm thinking, no, I'm not crazy. I'm just enjoying the moment, you know, or trying to bring people to smile or whatever. But, the, but, but in, the, in, the, in this particular moment in time, I realized that it's actually something people really need and they really desire that kind of freedom that I don't always find myself getting to, which has been um, like a very interesting experience. So um, I'm, all, I'm, I'm watching it and seeing that it is also something that is encouraging me as an artist to continue to move on in that direction where it's really coming from a place of my heart and not of a place of, I don't know, fame or, you know, con, you know I want recognition or all these things. And I know that this is also re the reason why my story is the way it is, is that I was a big ballerina. I was, I was on my way to becoming the first soloist all over the world and it was exciting. Um, but I couldn't keep my focus on that because my intention of being able to reciprocate or to be able to resonate, sorry, resonate with people on a, on a level of heart connection was so, it felt so far away, you know, being a ballerina on a big stage and it, with this, which I don't have anything against because this is also my chosen path on another way. So I have been working in this kind of interactive in improvisational theater work for the last 10 years in Berlin and um, 
that, that says a lot about my story. I don't do very often, um, uh, what's the word? Um, conventional art theater, although I, I do still participate in that respect for certain events or things, but most of the time my, my work is, as an artist is concentrated on interactive, um, improvisational theater and encounter. So it's given me an, also an opportunity to realize the value in the things that I've been actually doing for the last 10 years and shifting away from um, sort of this limelight position of being an artist uh, and, 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 and focusing on the actual depth of the encounter. Mm -hmm. uh, did you sketch any potential projects that or ideas that are going to happen um, in the next few months or? Yes, of course. And th this is also a very scary moment to start to share that because, you know, one of the main reasons why I have been so vastly versatile in all the things that I've wanted to do, all my interests, choreographing here and there, and acting and dancing and singing. And, you know, I have projects all over the place and a lot of them get done, but a lot of them don't get done because it's how it is when you're creative on that level. And um, so, yes, I mean, I'm, my, my, my main focus right now is to create um, a method of teaching, which I call wake shops, which um, I have actually started 10 years ago, along with the uh, research for the projects of all this interactive work that I do in theater and for um, performance, but also just to, um, to exp explain it's a more of a personal training slash um, group training that I would like to develop that um, will also allow people to understand the sensitivity and the depth of what it means to really move and dance in your daily life. So I, I, I don't know, that's very complicated to explain right now, but yeah, I'm working on a method of dance training uh, to un unleash people's inner artist and creativity. Maybe that's uh, really, I mean, it sounds really exciting and um, because now the world is uh, focusing more on how we learn things as adults. We're so interested in what makes it stick. So um, I'm really, really interested about what you're going to develop. So please keep me posted about it and how it turns out, what's the outcome of it and how people receive it. And because it will be a work in progress, wouldn't it? Because you think about something and then they come and you implement that method, but then you keep improving it because it's something that it's from the beginning, you innovate something. So it will keep changing until you, you get it to that certain shape that you envision and also you see that it's working. So I'm really excited for you. It's, it's a very exciting project. And I think also by being a Buddhist and knowing all those teachings and knowing what it feels to be in the moment, knowing what, how meditation helps you, I think by having all that experience with both dancing and teaching and, and the Buddhist experience, if I may call it that way, then you will be able to develop something really, really special. Yes, I hope so. And I, I am... It's always a work in progress, and as you said, it's 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 going to take its time. And I think the main the main thing is is that if anybody is listening, really, whatever it is that you want to achieve, just to keep going. And you know, if you achieve it, it's not it's not about uh, always the end result. It's usually mostly about the process of of that determination that is going to lead you to your your mission. And I think that's just keep going. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it sounds really inspiring for for the people that sometimes, you know, during these times because it's hard for most of the people, it's different and different means hard usually. So um when they don't find the energy or they don't know what to do I mean with themselves or with the time that they have now, I think this is a very good inspiration for them. Yes. Yeah, it's, um, I'm also working on, maybe I can mention that to you as well. Um, aside from the wake shops, I'm, I'm developing this app uh, with it called wake app, which is exciting as well. And that's, that's connected to that. So just to share. Um, and then what I also have um, very exciting news that I get to um, 
to star. I don't know if you say star, but I'm going to be uh, be playing in my first main role in a German movie in September. Yes, I know. <laughs> and actually, I have to play a German, so it's also going to be very challenging the next four months to develop all these things to make sure that I can concentrate and, you know, put the things in order and also practice and learn. Well, I speak German fluently, but yes, being a native uh, or playing a native is going to be difficult and also challenging. And um, yes, it's a story about a ballerina. So then that's also part of it all to make sure that I'm in shape. So there's a lot to do. And I think um, not to lose focus, but also to, to continue, like you said, with this Buddhist uh, energy, like, yes, we can. And every morning I'm putting that into my uh, day just to keep you know, pushing forward. Wow, you have loads of things, loads of wonderful many things going on. You're so busy and there are fixed things um, coming towards you, which is amazing. And I was just thinking about the part that you, you were going to, soon to be playing soon. Um, how is the entertainment industry going to evolve in the next few months in Germany? Do you know anything about that? All I can say about that is that the director that I'm working with is very positive about shooting dates in September. And she also knows that there are um, difficulties. In, well, there are, um, I don't know the word now, it's, I'm losing it. There are shortcomings or uh, obstacles. There are mm -hmm. obstacles to be um, dealt with. And, and there are a lot of things to read, which I haven't had time to read, <laughs> let's say, um, about what's really going on. So if you want, I can try to send you some information. I think it's all in German, though. But yeah, I, I have a feeling that uh, Germany will, as, as it is a very interesting economical, it has a strong consciousness in how it wants to continue to keep the economical situation up and running. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be just fine. I think summer is going to be quiet, more quiet than normal. But the need for people to get out and the and the, and is there are so many artists in Berlin. The the desire to encounter and the desire to be inspired is um, going to definitely take its uh, take its reins back and start to. You know, I, I feel like people need to get back to work and also they need to express themselves and. I have a feeling entertainment in general, it will shift, it will change, the perspectives will change, um, but how greatly it, it affects the, the business side, I, I'm not exactly sure if I can answer that. I think, I think such a movie as I'm going to be shooting that's very intimate and very, it's not a huge cast, it's a lot about me in the sense as a main character, I have a feeling it's going to work out to do this film. Um, that said, I, I really don't know. I think the government will get involved and decide those things and appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing with me all your plans and what you've been through during this time and what you think is going to happen in the next few months in the entertainment industry in Germany. It was lovely meeting you like this and, and talking to you. And I hope maybe we'll, we'll meet each other at some point in time i would love to come to see one of your shows please come please come you're always welcome all the best Steve. bye